Um, but whilst I was having talking about this at the beginning, I got a call or a message on for the show saying that was my son. My son would like to speak. And so we have on the line right now uh, the young man who was who says that he was and his attorney reached out to me to confirm that you know that this is indeed the young man we heard on the audio. Um, and I want to welcome on the phone Mr. Butler. How are you, Mr. Butler? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Listen, I mean, um, first of all, thank you for uh, deciding to call and share your story. What I will say for legal purposes, um, I know this is, I'm sure that there is an investigation. I've spoken with your attorney. So let's try not to preempt your case here and be as careful as possible without saying any names so that we can ensure that you have your case nice and strong. But I want to ask you um, really to tell us what happened that led up to this this voice note that led up to this this violence of seeming alleged violence that happened and you can confirm if that did happen or not uh, well what had happened was on sunday february 28th uh, about like 9 30 about, about well the time curfew was about to start i uh, mean my friends we were leaving because after they got into a little scuffle with some guys but it really i got it, uh, them to to separate from the fight or whatever. I remember mean, he's walking off, like, uh, my friends, they were looking for me because I fell back and they were looking for me and because they just got up an out, out, of, out of an altercation, they was like, uh, looking for me in a, like I say, I guess their body language gave off uh, feedback that they was about to fight or something. So the officer started arresting one of them mm -hmm. and the other brother wanted to, was like trying to explain to him that, we just got out of a little altercation and so on. And and then when I saw the officer arresting him, like them, both of them started getting arrested. So I came over to try to explain and the officer was like, no, back up, let, us, let them do their job or whatever. And I was like, okay. So when I back up, I realized I needed my key to at least wait in the car for them. So with whatever the officer would do with them, I could just be in the car waiting for them. And then uh, that's when the officer came to me and he started, uh, started to arrest me and I started to back up trying to figure out why was I being detained or why was I being arrested. Mm -hmm. And he just threw me on the ground after that and started arresting me. And that's when I started to get loud, start trying to figure out well, why am I being arrested? And I just, that's the question. I kept on asking, do I, them carry me to the Arawak station? Because he was in front of the Arawak station when they arrested us. So this happened and, at Arawaki, just uh... Yeah, Arawaki, fish fry, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, keep going, sorry. and then after we got into the station, that's when they started beating up on us. And like, ah, uh, my hand was still cuffed. Everyone hand was still cuffed. And I, the officer who was beating me, he didn't want me to speak because I was shouting, "Why am I being arrested? Why am I being arrested?" And he was trying to cover up my mouth. Then he threw me in the bathroom, started beating me. He turned on like the zinc, the water zinc, and put my head in the zinc. And he was slapping me, telling me, "Calm down, calm down." Or whatever, and then the whole time while this was going on, uh, my other friends they were getting beat, but I was in the bathroom because my mom, I was being loud, I was loud, very loud, telling them, asking them why they being arrested. And then that's when he uh, threw me out of the bathroom and I land on the ground, and then he threw my head into the wall and left the big hole inside of the inside of the wall uh, at the station. Then I started bleeding blood. And then he uh wipe the blood stain off my head and he was like he looked at the blood on his shirt and he was like well i get blood on his shirt and after that he gave me two kicks in my chest and after that, i like kind of like blocked out a little bit and then that's when uh after uh, that that's when uh, they took off my uh the, 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 the cuffs and they started to take i think the tangent statement or something like that and after that that's when uh that's when I was able to start recording off of my smartwatch. And that's when you heard uh, my friend in the background being slapped. Actually, I didn't even know that was going to happen because uh, I was dying down. This is like the ending part of the video. Hold on. So what you're saying is, uh, Charles, that you, you were assaulted first. Um, you're alleging that, hey, listen, you, you went into this um, 
you were detained for no reason in your estimation, but that you were, and this is all happening at Fish Fry Police Station, right? At our Waukee Police Station. Yeah. Uh, you are taken and because you are saying, hey, listen, why are you detaining me? And you were being loud um, that, and not, were you being violent? Were you being, were you attacking the officers? Or were you just no, I, when they arrested me, that's when I started asking them loudly once, because I wanted somebody to at least record it to, so people could see I was being wrongfully uh, uh, arrested, but I didn't do nothing. Um, so you get, so you are now taken inside the police station based on what you're saying and then thrown into the bathroom and then beaten by the same officer whose name is mentioned, who says, who says his name on this audio clip? Uh, no, that, it wasn't him, it was the other officer. So he there was said, a, he okay. also like at the ending part of the audio. Oh, wow. So, okay. So then, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, Charles, Charles, you're telling me then that uh, officers were taking turns beating y'all? I mean, like, so you got to... Yeah, got one to officer who was mentioning his name in the audio, he told my mom that, like, uh, a few of... I, uh, I beat up a few officers, and I had to be... He had to call back up to restrain me. So uh, when he said he had to call back up, I remember people coming back, but they came back to beat me. Like, not to, like, help restrain me, to help beat me. Because I, I said, like, at least... Four different boots kicking me when I was on the floor when I first went into there. Wow, wow, and and that what we're hearing in the audio is at the beginning is your friend, well, your friend ending, actually. I'm sorry, whole, say again. Thing. That was the ending part of the beating. Wow, but I wasn't able to record because my hand was cuffed the whole time. Wow. Wow. And, uh, so, in terms of you blacked out, right? You blacked out. Uh, um. Yeah, I blacked out a little bit. I blacked out for like five minutes. And then, like, they like didn't want to beat me no more because I guess I was bleeding a bit too much. Hmm. And yeah, uh, but after, after, after that, that's when I was able to start recording when they uh, let my cuffs loose. And they told me we was gonna be, uh, we were gonna be, we were gonna sleep in the cell at Nassau Street. So when we uh, left to for our key to go Nassau Street, uh, the officers that was at Nassau Street who did not have nothing to do with it, they was like, uh, well, we don't want these people in there. How they? Because we came in there like, you know, like we look like we took a, a beating from those officers. So mm. officer so who was at? Uh, now, first street was like, well, you need to get him to the hospital, and that's when they were like, uh, who wants to go to the hospital? And that's when we all replied, well, I want to go. And then that's when we went to the hospital. At least that's what we thought we were going, and then we ended up back to the Awawaki station. You and never then, went to the hospital. They, they said no, I wanted to go to the hospital, and no. you never right. went, because to go to the hospital means there would be a medical record. Right. So your friend, what was the condition of your friend? Because I, I, I mean, and you know what? Like uh, audio, you can hear doing body slam. I don't know, like I don't know which part of it is it, but like you could hear like a big boom boom. But I was him being body slam, and that's when he started like limping, and like he couldn't really walk too well. And that's why they said they were going to carry us back to the hospital, but they carried us back to Awaki, and then I guess one of the sergeants back at uh, Nassau Street called them back and said that we could have. Spend the night out in the cell, and that's when we spend the night in the cell at Nassau Street. And then, like around one o'clock the next day, that's when the paramedics came and take a look. They looked at our at my stuff, and they told me I needed to go to the hospital. But yeah. I went to a private hospital and a private doctor. Um, if you're just tuning in, uh, young Mr. Charles Butler is talking about um, uh, what you're hearing is is really. Uh, breaking in terms of the voice note that is circulating. Uh, it will be posted on my uh, page so you can go and subscribe to hit back the Nahaja Black Show on Facebook. Um, what you're hearing is that this young man is the one of the young men in the audio. And um, what you're saying, Mr. Butler, is that you were first fine. Were you charged with anything? Were you guys charged with anything? Uh, they charged us with well, all of us got like the same charge. So like all of us like were charged with assault to police, uh, misorderly conduct in a public place, obscene language, 
And I think it was like two of the charges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, that obscene language one is one of the one of the most horrific laws still on the book for giving carte blanche to police officers who curse you because he was cursing you uh, well, on this audio. But did anyone charge him for obscene language? Um, okay, so what is the... So I know now because I, your, your attorney reached out to me while I was on air saying, this is my client. Um, what, what is the next step for you guys? Uh, what is the next step? Well, we had our first hearing, so now we just have to wait for the next trial, which is in June. And, and you're, you're going to, have you guys placed a civil suit against the, the police officers? Yeah, we made a complaint like the following day. Onto the police station, to the uh, complaints unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything, have you heard anything from them? Nothing yet. Hmm. And how has this been for you? Um, I know uh, I can imagine as your mother uh, chatted with me how horrified she must have been. Um, but how has this been for you since then? Um, you know, as a young man, as someone who, you know, has undergoing this level of violence by the, you know, supposedly, allegedly, and I have to say allegedly, uh, just right. for, allegedly by the hands of the law. Um, how has this been for you and your friends? Well, well, I can't really speak about for my friends, for me personally, like especially those two kicks, those two kicks to the chest that, that keep on replaying uh, at night sometimes, like when I'm trying to sleep and like, and like when I lay on my chest, it's like really irritating. So like I, they have me on like some codeine pills, oh, wow. so I'm really numb to the end. So yeah, wow. so that kind of helps in a sense. But after that fades away, then it goes right back to that pain again at night. And and listen, I I mean, be careful with that uh, codeine. It is an opioid, and the last thing we need is for one challenge to lead to another. So. You know, yeah, that's right. uh, be be mindful of that. Um, uh, Charles, this story won't end here, I can assure you, because I'm going to be following up on it as well. And I'm happy that you guys reached out to me. Um, and I'm happy that you were smart enough to record it. Did you see, did you see the, when did you know that this was going to get violent? I did not even know, to be honest, because uh, he was like, like I said, it was like the ending part of the beating. So like, uh, this was at the moment. I don't know if you could, in the voice note, he said like, take their pictures. Like, that's mm -hmm. what we were doing. We are taking our pictures. So we were getting ready to take uh, photos. Mm -hmm. So after he was writing like everything he wrote on someone else's paper, he just was writing on my paper. Oh, so wow. that's when I was like, so you just copying and pasting everything. That's what you said, so, yes. Yeah, so that's what I was asking. And then that's when... Uh, my friend was like, he was like, I think he said like he can't breathe or something like that. And that's when the officer, like, he probably got upset because he, he assumed my friend was uh, shouting at him. And so that's when he started to beat him and slap him up and those other stuff. <sighs> Charles, my friend, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, I'm beyond uh, devastated and, and, I'm just, I'm so disappointed in us right now, but um, please let's stay in contact and, um, you know, we will, I'll be following the story for sure. And uh, hopefully if all proves to be as you account and that voice note is very much an indictment uh, filled with evidence there. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure knowing full well that, <laughs> that you, you were the recorder, I find that it's very hard with, with your witnesses and colleagues um, very hard for them to deny this and we'll see how this plays out. But I thank you so much for, for sharing this. And I'm so happy that you're with us and hopefully you, you get better and uh, not have to take those pain pills, man. And, uh, you know, get therapy if need be. So I'm trying and thanks for, thanks for the, for the, for the, for the, for the taking my story. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's the least I can do, my brother. The least I can do. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll, we'll stay in touch. Thank you, Charles. All right. All right.